Kia ora tato, everyone. Welcome uh, to this year's uh, National Digital Forum. My name is Andy Neal, and it's uh, my privilege to be the conference convener uh, this year. So I need to start with a few public service type announcements. So uh, bear with me as I, as I go through the preliminaries. First things first, uh, lunch and the breaks are up uh, in Oceania, um, which is on level three. Now, in the unlikely event of an emergency, uh, there'll be an alarm uh, and loudspeakers telling you to exit um, and head for the nearest fire exit and just really do whatever the Papa staff tell you to do. In the event of an earthquake, keep away from the windows, um, especially in here. Uh, take cover and stay until the shaking stops. The good news, I'm told, is that Te Papa is built to withstand uh, a magnitude 8.5 earthquake, so it's all going to be good. As you'd expect, it takes a lot um, to put on a conference like this, particularly on volunteer time. So I'd just like to take a few minutes to acknowledge everyone's involvement um, before we get started. Firstly, a huge thanks to our keynotes, um, George Oates, Claire Amos, Jose uh, Barbosa, Ben Osteen, and Trevor Owens. You know, thank you to those of you who have come so far um, uh, for your time and the energy that you're giving to our community. And to all of our speakers from Australia and New Zealand and the organizations you represent, um, thank you also for your time and commitment to NDF. You know, it's wonderful to have you here. A huge thank you, of course, goes out to our sponsors and supporters. Uh, this year being headlined by Auckland Museum, the National Library of New Zealand, Te Papa and the Ministry for Culture and Heritage. We'd also like to thank uh, Ngā Taonga, uh, Sound and Vision for their support. This year, the uh, Trade Hall is sponsored by Vernon Systems and Recollect. So please go in and talk with them. You know, they do a lot of work in our sectors and um, we're really lucky to have their support. They're joined by our other sponsors, uh, Internet New Zealand, uh, the Victoria University School of Information Management, Wellington City Council, and Museums Aotearoa. You know, without their support, the conference just wouldn't be able to happen, so thank you. And thank you also to the many people involved in uh, putting this conference together. A special thanks to Thomas and Slay and Michael Parry for heading up the the program team this year, it's, uh, it's really shaped up well, so thank you. Um, and thanks also to Dave Sanderson and the rest of the organizing team for supporting that. You'll also be seeing um, Thomason and Michael up here on the stage um, over the next few days as they introduce a few of the sessions. Thanks to Sarah Knox and Michael Lascarades for coordinating all the uh, workshops uh, and events. I heard the workshops yesterday went really well, so that's great. Um, and uh, Amy Joseph for help with registration and logistics, uh, Claire Murdoch for sponsorship, Leith Hahoff for web support, Fiona Feldzen for conference support, and Alan Puller for an amazing job pulling together the handbook. I'd also just like to personally thank um, Matthew um, Oliver for his support this year. And thanks to Parter Coopers, our conference organizers, for keeping everything running smoothly. Lastly, really just a thanks to all of you for being here. Um, whether you've been here before or whether you've, um, you know, this is your first time, um, you know, this, is, this event is for you. And we'd also be remiss if we didn't also thank the many organisations um, that make it possible for you to be here. Uh, to Papa again is putting on the free Wi-Fi, um, should be pretty easy to find. And you'll also find power plugs um, in some of the rows in the theatre. And if you're not seeing a plug near you, then um, have a look. Um, uh, during the breaks to find one if you need it. So the hashtag this year is NDFNZ. Now that is different to what's printed in the handbook. Sorry about that. Um, but best if you, if you use this one, please. We've committed again to live streaming the event, uh, so particularly the keynotes. So um, you know, please tweet that out. Um, the stream location is on the homepage of the NDF website, ndf.org.nz. And we're again recording all of the sessions, um, including the, the streamed um, sessions upstairs. Uh, we'll be getting those up on YouTube as soon as we can after the conference. And if you need any help with anything else, then please just um, talk to the Partico Partico Coopers team upstairs in Oceania. 
In terms of the conference, there is a lot going on, as you'd expect. We've again got a, a mix of um, plenary sessions uh, in here and stream sessions where you'll be back, um, uh, you'll, you'll be upstairs. We've also got a, a couple of special events that I want to tell you about. First up is the, the Keynote Cafe. Now, so this is an opportunity to come and speak with our wonderful Keynotes. I mean, you can speak to them at any time throughout the conference, of course. Um, but at lunchtime, um, there'll be an opportunity to actually sit down and have a chat with them. One of the big challenges we always face um, at NDF is that there's always at least one speaker who's at the very end of the conference. And you sometimes get that situation where um, you really want to speak to them, but then it's too late. So we're going to, I'm just going to do a quick run through of who our keynotes are this year so that you know who they look like and you can go and chat to them. Uh, so in reverse chronological order, um, uh, George Oates is currently director of a design firm in London called Good Form and Spectacle. And you can speak with her about designing interfaces that people love, user experience design, um, art direction, product management, and working with complex systems and redesigning workflows. Uh, Jose Barbosa has a long history with the media, and you can speak with him about the history of censorship uh, in New Zealand, news and journalism, documentary making, writing and creating. He, he's actually he's a user of our collections, um, so pay attention to what he says. Claire Amos is a deputy principal at Hobsonville Point Secondary School in Auckland, and you can speak with her about uh, e-learning in schools, and teaching English, uh, keeping our kids safe online, blended learning environments, and future focus change in the education sector. Ben Osteen is the technical lead for the British Library Labs project, and you can speak with him about open access strategies, crowdsourcing, data preservation, 3D printing, digital humanities, developer events, and hardware hacking. And we're going to be hearing more about Trevor um, Owens shortly because he is our first keynote. Um, but if you're interested in digital curation, digital preservation, online communities, video games and culture, open source or digital humanities, then he's your man. Now, of course, you can talk to these fine folk about anything you like, um, but that's just a really a bit of a heads up of some of the things that um, they know a lot about. Tonight, of course, um, we've got our reception event up in Oceania. So please head on up after Ben's keynote for some good conversation, a bite to eat, and a few drinks. And if you're new to NDF, then I really recommend you, you head up because um, it's a lot of fun and everyone's really friendly. You're really friendly, right? Yeah? Yes, good. Tomorrow morning, we hold uh, the NDF AGM. Um, in the past, we've, we've held this uh, during the lunch break, um, we've just decided to have a breakfast um, this time. So a light breakfast is available, and you should be there at 7.45 a.m. for an 8 a.m. start. And if you haven't registered for the AGM, could you go and speak with um, Diane up at the, at the NDF stand in Oceania, um, because we need to know whether you're coming or not. Since the last NDF conference last year, of course, we have launched our membership um, program and thank you to everyone who has signed up as a member. It's been a, a brilliant year um, in terms of membership and you'll hear more about that at the AGM. And if you want to join as a member of NDF, um, the details are on our website uh, and you can sign up and join the community forum. We are pleased to announce that we're also launching uh, the NDF Awards tomorrow. So Matthew Oliver will be back up on stage in the closing session to recognise some of the standout achievements uh, in our sectors this year. We have a few categories. I was not involved in the naming. Uh, the categories are Look Who's Talking uh, for the Best Social Media um, Initiative, Getting Your Scans On, uh, for a new digitization project. It ain't been done before uh, for innovative use of something completely new and shiny new thing uh, for a new digital exhibition or collection. We'll also be um, recognizing one of um, our ambassadors and a standout ambassador this year for NDF. Now, your role in this is to nominate initiatives or people for recognition in these categories. And we've also got an open category for, for other um, people or initiatives that you'd like to see recognized. Now, the, um, the online um, nomination form is here, ndf.org.nz slash 
awards. So please be generous and nominate your colleagues for their great work this year. This afternoon, we'll also be inviting the Living Heritage team to the stage to recognize the efforts of school children in creating online stories about their communities. And you'll hear more about Living Heritage this afternoon, but just a small reminder to all speakers, and I'm looking at you, um, that uh, there will be children in the audience, and uh, so we're expecting all talks to be family friendly, please. This is also a good time uh, to note that NDF has a new code of conduct, or it has a code of conduct, um, that you can find on our website at um, uh, ndf.org.nz slash code. So it's actually a pretty good read and um, something you should all be aware of. So, you know, when you've got a minute, um, please check it out. Last but not least, uh, we've decided this year to add an, un an unconference session to the conference this year, and it's running in the last streamed session tomorrow. Here's how it's going to work. Up in Oceania, you'll find a whiteboard uh, with some post-it notes available. And what we'd like you to do is uh, write up the topics that you'd like to talk about and put your name on it and feel free to group um, the post-it notes uh, you know, if there are a few ideas that are looking similar. And then tomorrow, um, we will tell you uh, what the unconference agenda is going to look like. And if you're interested in those, those topics, then come along and participate. So the question is, well, what might we like to talk about? Some of you may remember from NDF last year, um, one of the national challenges we set was about being smarter about digitization. And you may also remember my fondness for the New Zealand Cartoon Archive at the uh, Alexander Turnbull Library. So in order to frame up this challenge again, um, let me take you back to 2002, which is the year in which the National Digital Forum um, was actually formed. It's actually hard to believe that it was created that long ago. Oh, that's the unconference session tomorrow. Um, so in 2002, we, we had, or we still had, um, the War on Terror. Uh, this is uh, from Malcolm Walker. And with apologies to our Australian friends, um, we had a refugee crisis in Afghanistan. We were concerned about the price of housing. This from um, Christos, uh, Christopher Slane. And the commercialization of the All Blacks was running rampant. This from James Hubbard. So that was 13 years ago. And earlier this year, I also dug up the full output, output from the first NDF conference and republished it on the NDF website. And it's absolutely fascinating. Um, it's on the About section of the website, if someone could tweet it out, please. And uh, here are some of the opportunities that we were talking about 13 years ago. And look, I apologize for putting uh, a screen of bullet points up on stage so early in the morning. Um, but I wanted to make these points pretty quickly. So back then, we saw the opportunities with access, so the ability to provide better access to collections and institutions 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and for those who traditionally may not have been able to access the materials. Education, providing and assisting different forms of educational experience, promoting a New Zealand identity, tourism, and cultural heritage, Commercial opportunities, new opportunities for wealth creation and driving economic returns, resource sharing uh, to make better use of um, scarce resources, breaking down silos between organizations, and preservation of collections and fragile materials. And here are some of the challenges that were identified. You know, how can we work out what to digitize? Um, sustainability and funding, who pays? How do we care for and maintain our digital collections? Skills and training. Are our organizations and people able to take advantage of the opportunities? Do they have the right skills and training? Ownership and property rights, moral rights. How do we honor and present information correctly? How do we resolve uh, issues of indigenous rights? The digital divide, leadership and responsibility. Who leads, who drives, which institutions? Should there be national infrastructure? Te technology, uh, how do we go about digitizing? Where do we go to for advice? So I've just read that out pretty much word for word um, as it was documented 13 years ago. 
And the currency of this just kind of smacks you in the face. I mean, this is 13 years ago, and this is exactly the same kind of stuff. If we, if we got around a whiteboard and go, well, what are the opportunities? What are the challenges? You know, it would be pretty much exactly like this. So I come back again, you know, why do, you know, why is that challenge about being smarter about digitization important? Well, it's because content is at the heart of all of the experiences and opportunities that, that we create in our organizations. Without content, our items and our objects, we cannot function as museums, libraries, archives and galleries. And neither can we function as wellsprings of education um, or creation without our content. And that is, you know, that's what's happening every day uh, for many people because if it's not online, um, it's like it doesn't exist. And I talked about this last year. If it's not on Google they, and they can't find it, it's like it doesn't exist. And I don't agree, disagree that our physical spaces and experiences are important. You know, they absolutely are. There's nothing quite like experiencing an artwork, an exhibition, um, a handwritten diary, um, or an archival record firsthand, or being in a community space that is welcoming and supportive. But I just don't think we are ready for what comes next. You know, we're not ready for the day when Amazon or um, some other equivalent service launches a, a Spotify uh, type service for free access to um, its library of books. You know, with the back catalogue of New Zealand published materials just not available electronically. We are not ready for the kids who want to 3D print um, objects for a pop-up experience at home or in the classroom. You know, if they can't get the full digital skeleton of a mower, are they just going to go with an emu? <laughs> Our archives are not ready for the new wave of search services that are going to be powered um, by, our, by our phones, you know. Um, and our artworks are not ready for the immersive virtual reality experiences that are starting to open up the world's art. You know, it's fantastic that our kids will be able to explore the Mona Lisa without leaving New Zealand, but where is our New Zealand art? Where is our Pacific art? You know, what, what used to sound like science fiction, you know, if you've been coming to these events for a few years, these are things that were bubbling up over the last 13 years. I mean, it used to sound like science fiction. It is not science fiction anymore. And in the eyes of the general public, if it's not in the free digital library, if the 3D model isn't there, if Siri or Google now can't find the thing that they're looking for, and if it's not an, an artwork that I can see on my VR headset, it's going to be like it just doesn't exist. You know, for the vast majority of people. And maybe you're thinking that's okay. I'm, I'm thinking you're not, since this is a digital conference, it's what you're here for. Um, but, you know, there are people out there who, you know, and it's reasonable to say, well, we're mainly about the experience that people have when they come into our physical spaces, our museums, our exhibitions, our reading rooms, our galleries. You know, and like I said, I think that's perfectly reasonable. But we're leaving money on the table. You know, I know all of our organizations are different. But at the National Library, for instance, we're approaching a ratio of 100 digital experience to every one walk-in visitor. And there are huge opportunities there to further our goals through digital interaction. And that's why we keep coming back to topics like digitization, um, the source of digital material and preservation. It's the foundation from which everything else becomes possible. So very simply, we need to start, we need to continue strengthening those foundations. So if you're going to participate in the unconference sessions this year, let's not recover that same ground we covered 13 years ago. Let's talk about how to make the next big steps. And not just about digitization, of course. Let's hear about all of the ideas and knowledge that you've got to share with others, and where can we work together to improve um, the value that New Zealand gets from um, our, our services and what we've got to offer. So it'll be really interesting to see what you all put up on the board. Like I said, it's a free-for-all, so, so go for it. At the end of the day, the National Digital Forum is simply a network for those of us working in this digital space. And it's a place for us to share our ideas and experiences and to learn from each other. And it's an environment where collaboration becomes more possible. So be open to that. Uh, and enjoy yourself. It's going to be a great few days.
And let's get on with it. It's now my pleasure uh, to properly introduce you to Trevor Owens uh, for our opening keynote. Trevor is based at the Institute of Museum and Library Services in Washington, DC, uh, which is the primary source of federal support for the United States, 123,000 libraries and 35,000 museums. He has a background in digital collecting and preservation, and he's currently responsible for the development of their national uh, digital platform. He has a doctorate in uh, social science research methods and educational technology, and his research is focused on the history and design of online community software systems, video games and culture, and software tools for humanities scholarship. He's here to speak with us about people, communities, and platforms, uh, digital cultural heritage, and the web. Please welcome in, uh, join me in welcoming Trevor to the stage. Thank you. 